Hi folks, hope you're okay today, it's good to be with you. We're doing our final study and uh, we looked at the grace of God in that last message and we're now looking at perseverance. Perseverance and it's an introduction to the book of Philippians. Don't forget my website is jasonbirdspreacher.com you can follow me on Facebook, on Twitter, and, um, and Patreon as well. And uh, God, I trust, will be with you and bless you in all that you do. And um, thank you for coming to listen to this message. So let's come before the Lord and ask his blessing. Father, I just pray that this message, for those who may be struggling, those who are finding it very difficult, Lord, I pray that you would really help them to not give up, but to go forward in you, Lord. Bless them, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I hope this is a blessing to you and uh, an encouragement to you. So if you turn to the book of Philippians, and uh, so we're looking at an overview of Philippians. Now, the book of Philippians is, is like a soldier who's away on a battle somewhere in a foreign country and writes on to encourage his family or friends. So Paul is like that. Paul has been arrested. He's in prison. And he's writing to a church to encourage this church that he really cares about. And he's trying to encourage them to persevere. St. Gregory said this about perseverance, the value of good works depends on perseverance. You live a good life in vain if you do not continue it until you die. So we're, we're to persevere, and that's the message of, of this sermon, perseverance. If you turn to uh, Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. So he's saying there, persevere. You need to be patient and continue in the things of God. Paul was in prison and he got to the point where he, he, he was struggling so badly that he was thinking of even dying. That's how difficult it was. And sometimes we get to a position in our life that things... We, we don't get what we want, and, and, and it's difficult for us, and we can feel really, really discouraged. And Paul got to that point. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 23, we see a, uh, really how desperate he gets. For I am in a strait between two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. So he's contemplating death. He's thinking, you know, it might be better for me to die and be with the Lord. But he's got to a point where he's pretty challenged by discouragement. And he's trying to help himself to persevere and give other people advice to persevere as well. And that's what we're looking at in the book of Philippians. And we're looking at three points. The challenge of perseverance the example of perseverance and the mindset of a perseverance. So the challenge of perseverance. When I was a, uh, younger, when I was about 20, we went on a, uh, a group of us went on uh, an outward bound course to Estelle. And I remember we were in the mountains and there were two groups. There was one group of young people and they set up their tents on a stormy night. The storm was coming down, the rain was coming down, floods were coming down the mountains. And one team got their tent up really quickly. But we, as a team, were arguing and moaning and we didn't get the tent up very quickly and we got very wet. There are challenges. We had to persevere to get in that tent 
and so we could be safe. And we have to persevere in life, especially in the Christian life. And there are challenges. And Paul faced challenges. He, he faced the challenge of insincere people, people who were two-faced. Philippians 1.16 To one preach Christ of contention, not seeming to pause and to add affliction to my bonds. So there were people preaching to get at Paul to wind him up. And sometimes there are people who try to wind you up, they're two-faced. There was the challenge of false teachers, Philippians 2.2. 2. Fulfill ye my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Uh, sorry, Philippians uh, 3.2 I think it is. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. There were people trying to pull Paul and others into religion rather into a relationship with Jesus. And then there was the challenge of personal conflict. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 2, we read, I beseech Judas and beseech Sittike that they be of the same mind of the Lord. There were women not getting on. So Paul is dealing with two-facedness, uh, people trying to pull back to religion, not relationship, and people who were in conflict. So how do we deal with that kind of challenge in our lives? Maybe we're challenged, maybe we, maybe we have people around us who are two-faced, maybe we have people who are trying to pull us back into religion, not into relationship. Maybe we have people around us, personal conflicts in our family or in our churches. How do we deal with it? Number one, we pray. Philippians 1.9 And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. We need to pray that God will give us more love. Secondly, appreciation. Philippians 1.7 even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defence and confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers of my grace. He has them in his heart. Paul appreciates the Philippians. Verse 4, chapter 4, verse 15, he appreciates that they gave gifts to him. You've all seen the child that gets a present and, and doesn't thank you for it, and the child that gets a present and thanks you for it. And if we show appreciation to people and respect people, then it will make the situation better for us. But if we show no appreciation, then it will destroy relationships. We need to appreciate the people around us to think and thank them for the good things that they've done in our lives. Sovereignty of God, Philippians 1.12 but I would that you should understand, brethren, that these things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. Paul had these two-faced people, false teachers, and these arguments within the church. But he saw that God was over it, that God was working out his purposes. and It's kind of like we see uh, uh, puppets being moved with strings, and we can only see the strings, but we don't see the puppet master. And that he has a plan and, what, and know what he's doing. And so in life we see the strings but we don't know why or what's happening. But we need to realise that God is over all the strings of our life and that he's working out his purposes. God is in control. So even the difficulties that are in your life, God is working it out for your good. And then reality. Sorry, then we stand together. So we pray, we appreciate, we believe in the sovereignty of God and we stand together, Philippians 1, 27. Only let your conversation be as become of the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast one in spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. They stood together as one. We're stronger together than being apart. The devil loves to rip churches apart, rip believers apart, rip families apart, but we are stronger together than being apart. So we have to try to be together rather than not be together. Philippians chapter 1 verse 29, we also have to have reality. 
For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Paul was a realist. He didn't sugarcoat things. He didn't pretend. He's saying here, look, when we've sorted all these issues out, God's in control and we've prayed and we've showed love to one another, we stand together, we're still going to be tough. There's still going to be hard knocks. <laughs> so get ready for it. You might feel there's two-faced people around you. You might feel people are trying to pull you back into religion rather than relationship. And you might feel there are conflicts in your life. But if you pray, appreciate, have sovereign, believe in the sovereignty of God, stand together and be real, you'll be able to persevere in that situation. Second, the example of perseverance. We remember Muhammad Ali when... Uh, it was the Vietnam War, the government tried to, he didn't believe what they were doing and they tried to stop his career, but he persevered, he didn't give up, he kept on with his career. And we admire people who persevere and the greatest perseverance of all is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have some lessons concerning his example of perseverance. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, being found in a fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, where God hath highly exalted him, and given him the name which is above every name. He is Jesus. He is God. He is in the form of God. He is God. The Greek form means he's God. But he humbled himself and became of no reputation. He who created the stars was born in a manger. He who created the stars was on a cross with blood coming down his brow. He humbled himself and became nothing. And if you want to persevere in the midst of difficulty, you need to learn humility. You see, when you're at your most vulnerable, when you're at your most broken, that's when you can be the most selfish, the most difficult to live with. That's when it really shows how selfish you are. In your brokenness, all you can do is think about yourself. But Christ, he humbled himself. It was not about him. He humbled himself and made himself nothing, and then he was exalted. And in the midst of your difficulty, in the midst of your problems, it's all about you. I, 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 me, me, me. You've got to meet my need. It's all about me. It's what I want. You've got to give me. You've upset me. It's all about me. But we've got to pray that God would help us to die to ourselves and make it about them. Think about others and their needs. And if we do that, we become a blessing in the perseverance rather than a pain in the neck. In 2 Timothy, uh, sorry, in 2 Philippians, chapter 2, verse 19. But I trust the Lord Jesus to send Timothy shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. Paul could send Timothy to do a task because Timothy was humble. 2 Philippians, chapter 2. Two, verse 25, verse 25. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labour and fellow soldier, but your messenger, uh, but your messenger, and he that ministered to my wants. Sorry. Yes, I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labour and fellow soldier, but your messenger, and he that ministered to my wants. Epaphroditus was humble and he was able to be used by God to be a comfort to the Philippians and Paul. We need to learn the example of the Lord Jesus. He humbled himself, he made himself of no reputation. And if we're going to be a blessing in the midst of our suffering, we need to humble ourselves. Otherwise, we're just going to be selfish and be, we're going to be uh, difficult to live with. But that example not is only humility, it's also holiness. People think holiness is boring. Is it boring to receive love? If someone really loves you, is that boring? 
If someone's really kind to you, is that boring? To be holy is not boring. To be holy is to live a good life the way we should live. Philippians chapter 3, verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same thing. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. Paul is saying, I, 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 I'm not interested in religion. And then he says, verse 8, Ye doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Verse 10, That I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, even by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not, verse 12, not that I have already attained or were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. Verse 14, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. When we're, when we're suffering and we're finding it difficult, the temptation is to go back to our old ways. Do you remember a dog can go back to its vomit? A dog can vomit and then go back and eat it. And when it gets tough, sometimes we can say, what's this Christianity about? And we can go back to our old ways. We need to be careful of that. If you're discouraged, be careful you don't go back to your old ways. Or if you've gone back to your old ways, you need to turn away and focus on Christ again. So the example of perseverance, the Apostle Paul and the Lord Jesus Christ, Humility and holiness. Humility in the Lord, holiness in Paul seeking Christ and not his old ways. And then thirdly, the mindset. Sorry, the... Uh, yeah, the mindset of perseverance. The story of a girl in a film where she had this... Um, guy who was a bodyguard she came from a rich family and he was a bodyguard and he was with her all the time and this guy taught this 12 year old girl to swim and to uh, uh, do uh, uh, attend uh, competitions where you could see who was the fastest swimmer and this 12 year old girl was not very confident and he told her to be confident to have the mindset that she can win and eventually she began to win because she had the mind to win. And the battle is in the mind. If we're full of negativity in the mind, we'll live a negative life. If our mind is full of positive, we'll live a positive lifestyle. That mind has to think humbly. Again, humility. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. If therefore, therefore, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill my joy that you be like-minded, have the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem the other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The moment you lose respect for somebody and you're proud and you think you're better than them is the moment the relationship is not going to go anywhere but it's just going to go downhill. You have to maintain your respect for people and that means you have to have a humble attitude about yourself. You're causing problems because you're not walking in humility. You're causing problems in your life because you're not respecting people who you should be respecting. It should be a humble mind and it should be a positive mind. Philippians 4, 8. Philippians 4, 8. Sorry, I got an itchy nose. And Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. We're to think the best of people. 
you know, somebody might hurt you and then through the week you meditate on it and you nurse it and you think of all the bad things about that person. But here it's saying, think of the good things. Think of the good things of that person. It's got to be a humble mindset, a positive mindset and a joyful mindset. Philippians 4 verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. In other words, look for something to rejoice in. Don't look for the negatives where you're sour and you're sad, but look for the positives. Look for the things that you can rejoice in. Samson uh, told Delilah about his hair and she cut his hair off and he lost his strength. If you have no joy for the day, you will lose your strength. Your joy is your strength. You need your joy. So guard the joy. Don't let anybody take away the joy. So meditate on things that will give you joy. Anxiety is like leprosy. Leprosy eats away. Anxiety can eat away at your heart. So we need to realize that God has got everything in control and God is with you and God will meet your need. So don't have anxiety. Uh, Philippians 4, 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Anxiety will kill you. So the mindset is to pray and let God carry those needs for you. So we've come to the end. Final application. In perseverance, have biblical vision. Philippians chapter 1 verse 8, 18. Philippians 1 verse 18. What then, notwithstanding in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, and ye will rejoice. He's got people who are two-faced, he's got false teachers, he's got problems with the church, but he believes that he rejoices that Christ is preached. God is working out his plan. No matter what mess is around your life or mess in your church or whatever, God is working his plan out in your life and in the church's life. That is biblical vision, to focus on what God is doing. Conduct yourself well. Philippians 1, 27, Only let your conversation as becometh the gospel of Christ. Conduct yourself well. Don't go back into the old ways. Don't live a life of sin, but live a life for God. Walk in love. Philippians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Timothy, be servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons. What's, what is interesting about that remark there in Philippians 1, verse 1? It's the only time that Paul does not remind the church of his apostleship. All the other epistles, somewhere in the epistles, he will remind them that he is an apostle. But in this letter, he does not mention that he is an apostle. Why? Because he had a real deep, special love for these people. They were really special to Paul. And, and, he, and they were special to him and he, he didn't have to pull rank on them. Paul often called his be fellow believers beloved. Colossians chapter 4 verse 7, beloved. Colossians 1 7, beloved. Colossians 4 9, beloved. Colossians 4 14, beloved. He loved the people of God. We need to have that love for our brothers and sisters. When a brother or a sister hurts us, we need to have love for them. When somebody in the church hurts us, we need to have love for them. When a church hurts us, we need to have love for them. When a friend has hurt us, we need to have love. We need to walk in love. And that is a great help to perseverance. And then, finally, in Philippians 3.9, we need to stand for the gospel. There is a gospel. It says, And found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, 
the righteousness which is of God by faith. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Paul's faith was supremely in Christ. Paul believed that Christ died for him and Christ was his salvation. And he trusted in Christ and not himself. He trusted in Christ for his salvation and not his own good deeds. He trusted in Christ. He stood for the gospel. If there is no God, there is no meaning to life, there is no morality. But there is a God. And this God came down and died and rose again. And if we trust in him and believe in him, we are saved. And we have a relationship. And we as the people of God must stand for the gospel and proclaim the gospel. And if we're to per persevere, if we focus on the gospel, it will give us clear vision about how to go forward in our life. It will give us the direction where we're to go. Are you standing in your church for the gospel? Are you going to church standing with the people for the gospel? It will give direction to your life and will help you to persevere. So we've come to the end. So we've done the two Bible studies and uh, two sermons. And I hope that's been a blessing to you. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and your grace and your mercies and your blessings. And we give you the prayers and we give you the glory. And I pray, Lord, that this message would help people to persevere. It would help people to go forward in you and not to go back into the world. I pray that it would help them to be strong in you and to go forward. And I pray that you would use it to speak to them and help them and comfort them in their walk with you, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I hope that's been a blessing to you. And keep going. Don't get dis discouraged. You've got to keep going. There's only one way, and that's forward. Alright? God bless you.